Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another video by Asia Digital Mojo. Hope you enjoy! Hi everyone, I'm doing another tea time sharing about uh, low cost globalization from Chongqing Mansion. Uh, I haven't got any videos for you this time, so this will be a little bit shorter. It's uh, a very interesting book, they're all encompassing book. It's by a man called Gordon Matthews who really studied Chongqing Mansion. So he went there, he lived there for a while, he uh, spoke to the uh, residents, business owners in a lot of depth, got a lot of different people's stories. So this book really covers uh, the people of Chongqing Mansion, the culture, languages, the businesses, and uh, also how it sort of coexists within Hong Kong. So, um, has anyone here actually been to Chongqing Mansions, like within? No? No, no, no. Okay, well, first of all, before we go into Chongqing Mansions, let's talk about globalization and uh, how it happens. So, basically, uh, I'm sure you all know what globalization is. It's the interaction of people across uh, multiple countries and cities, and it can be for a number of reasons. For example, business or personal. And um, it's really about mixing a lot of different cultures in a single place. For example, if you look at Singapore, it's a very multicultural city. Um, you've got a lot of people from all over the place there. Same, th same with Hong Kong. And um, what's really helped globalization in the last few years um, is digital communication. So now we've got uh, social networking channels such as um, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, connecting people even better, but globalization really has been happening for thousands of years. So you would hear about uh, traders going from China to all over the world back when um, we didn't even have the internet. So it's, it's not a new phenomenon by any means, but it's certainly being facilitated by digital communications. So what exactly is low-cost globalization? Low-cost globalization is basically um, business activities, personal relations that don't need millions of dollars to start up or um, uh, get funded. So it's really something that can be done on ver a very small amount of money. And uh, as uh, Gordon Matthews says in his book, uh, Low-cost globalization takes place not through the dealings of large corporations, but rather through individuals dealing with one another, largely on the basis of trust and working with a high degree of risk. So these are a lot of people who work one-on-one -on -one sometimes and really just have to trust that the other person they're working with is going to fo um, follow through. So this is low-cost globalization. So Chongqing Mansions, okay, this place is infamous. I know a lot of you haven't been here, but I'm sure you've at least uh, heard its reputation. Um, Chongqing Mansions, it's located in Chimsa Choi and was opened in 1961, so it's about 50 years old now. It's got 17 floors and is a really, really big mix of people from all over the world. And uh, it's kind of an all-in-one building, almost. It's got lots of retail shops, it's got guest houses, money services, restaurants. It's, it's a lot in a single building. So looking at low-cost globalization in Chongqing, we'll take a look at the building first. So if you've been in Hong Kong for a while, you know that uh, Chongqing has a very interesting reputation. It's, uh, it's intimidating, it's scary, but at the same time it's eclectic, it's exotic, you know. You've got a lot of people starting up businesses there, so it's very enterprising. It's multifaceted in a, uh, in a way. It's very, very business-centric. And quite often what you'll find in Chongqing is that it's a lot cheaper than anywhere else in Hong Kong, which is uh, very interesting considering that Hong Kong is not the cheapest place in the world to be, but for some reason everything in Chongqing seems a little less. Unfortunately, Chongqing isn't always uh, full of the uh, legitimate services. It's got plenty of legitimate services, but uh, some not so as well. So in terms of users, uh, Chongqing is home to a lot of people, especially from South Asia and Africa. And um, it's also home to a number of asylum seekers. Um, I'm not saying that people from those countries only are asylum seekers, but it's because Chongqing itself is just cheaper than a lot of other places in Hong Kong, and you have a lot of other people there. So people create connections and they stay there more often. And you get a lot of different languages spoken in the under the sorry, within one single building, which is 
you've got Tamil, Cantonese, English, Urdu, Man Mandarin, Hindi, Swahili, French, Punjabi, Bengali. It goes on and on. It's a very, very multicultural um, place to be. And because you have so many different people from so many different walks of life, what happens is you've just got this really nice melting pot of different cultures. So you're walking through different parts of the world in a single building almost. So in terms of businesses within Chongqing, uh, you've got a lot in the way of trade. And that's because Chongqing Mansions is kind of like a gateway between China and the rest of the world. So a lot of goods from China uh, go through Chongqing Mansions and uh, traders there will often take a lot of these goods and go back to South Asia or Africa or to other countries where they originate from. And usually, since this is low-cost globalization, people often just carry goods on their own. So they're not using big delivery services like DHL and FedEx. Now these are people who, within their own suitcases, pack a whole lot of things and go wherever they came from. So a lot of the goods you'll find in Chongqing Mansion are often electronics so thing, and uh, accessories, so watches, bags, clothing, and as Ankit mentioned, you'll get a lot of things like mobile phones, but not all of them are genuine, <laughs> yes. So you'll notice how, especially outside of Chongqing Mansions, there are a lot of touts there who, um, or a lot of people there who try to sell you copy goods. Um, often you can find them in Chongqing as well and basically they're sold at a fraction of the price. So in conclusion, low-cost globalization and how it applies to us is basically, it's just a big story about how you don't need to connect with big name clients in order to advance. I mean, Chunking Mansions has managed over the last 50 years in its own little uh, web of how it works. And one good thing to remember is the important role that culture plays in providing services. So one example that uh, Gordon Matthews mentioned in his book is about shoe sizes in um, mm. China versus Africa. So shoe sizes in Africa can be a little bit bigger. So when traders come here, they ask for bigger sizes, which is not always easy to find in China. So at least at the very, um, at the very least, it reminds us about how to uh, think about different perspectives and dis different users. And an interesting thing is it teaches us to be empathetic. So we're learning about different people from different cultures, but you know, uh, some of the people you'll find in Chongqing mansions don't have the, the happiest histories. So uh, even though they're not of the, the happiest backgrounds, they're still trying, they're still working hard like other people do whether legitimately or sometimes not, so they're still tr making an effort. And essentially, even though low-cost globalization can be risky, it's actually a really um, great way of sharing knowledge and sharing a global understanding and cooperation. So it's enriching a lot of um, connections between different uh, people of different parts of the world. So that's what we can take away from it, basically. Be more empathetic and uh, Remember that low-cost globalization is a great way to enrich our understandings of the world. So thank you very much. Hi everyone, thanks for watching our video. Like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to comment.